how did you get so involved with all of these different channels and doing artwork for them? Like what what kind of puts you in the realm of uh, the YouTube branding graphic designer, if you will? Yeah, sure. So um, back in 2013, this was at the time when um, I'd say uh, Hidden Block was was being shaped. Hidden Block was basically a um, a, a multi, I would say like a multi-channel, basically like a group of people that collaborated and uh, created um, YouTube content in many different styles. And uh, right. I was I was a big fan of that when I was uh, still living in the Netherlands. And um, I I've always wanted to kind of like contribute to a, a a YouTube community in the past. So I decided to um, to literally just send. Uh, categories at the time a facebook message because back in the day i think you could still do that but you could like just send a a you was it a facebook page a message and i literally just introduced myself and i said hey my name's nico i love your content um is there a way how i could help you out with maybe like some merchandising or whatsoever so i sent him a bunch of examples and uh as luck had it he he thought um my work was great and um, he wanted to do something with it. So we decided to make a bunch of designs, which was at the time was a design based off of a gag that he had with Hideo Kojima, which he called Hideo Freaking Kojima. So uh, at the time, I made a design for that. And that kind of, when um, Caddy decided to promote me at the time, he, he catapulted my career um, from... Yeah, f from that YouTube video into into my Twitter, and uh, as luck has it, at one point I was approached by a Twitter user called Joey Razorburn. He's still around, um, by the way, and he was the first one to ask me, "Hey, um, great stuff you've done, but can you also maybe do like um, a, a logo or something for me, or whatever? Can you make my video basically look right. better?" And that that was the first time someone was asking you specifically as opposed yeah. to you like asking them gotcha so so when i uh, approached caddy at the time i was doing an educate uh, a, d a degree in a multimedia design and we were very specialized in print media because print media was uh was kind of um you know the popular thing in the netherlands at the time so sure. um that was the kind of skill set that i was trained in at the time so when when Joey approached me with the question of hey can you do something for YouTube it was something I honestly never dis uh, thought of like exploring into so sure. yeah so so when I um so when he contacted me I just looked at like the the main structure of a uh, of what I would like to call a, a comedic review video and I noticed right. like okay well they they use uh, specific footage like from a four three aspect ratio. And it kind of creates this like black backdrop and that, you know, it's not inherently wrong, but some people would like to kind of like spruce that up a little bit. So I thought, okay, maybe he will need an asset for that. And um, what is it? Sometimes you see um, templates or thematics come back into thumbnails. So I was like, well, maybe he could then maybe have a, a thumbnail where it's just literally like putting an image in and um, it makes the thumbnail immediately look better. So I just kind of went from there, uploaded that. And uh, as luck had it, loads of other YouTubers jumped on board of that. And I, I think what, what helped with that was that because um, there were probably people that did it before. And I, I'm not like right. discrediting them or anything. They've probably done amazing jobs by themselves as well. Because sure. I do see sometimes creators doing similar work fields and they are really damn good at their job. Right. Um, but it, it was still relatively new because of just you know youtube being new and, and those kind of requirements weren't really needed before that right? yeah you, what, what what you tend to see back then was was that there there wasn't really um yeah how do you say this um i i just noticed that there there weren't a lot of people that um had like, like there weren't really like designers for this kind of stuff so sure. like i said uh before I, i've always felt that i wanted to contribute towards gaming communities so i I just, I just saw an opportunity. I was like, hey, I, I really like making these designs. Um, people seem to need them. And I was like, hey, maybe I could just, you know, keep going with this and see where it, where it's going. Maybe I could create a sure. career out of this. And um, what is it? And do this for a living, which would be amazing. So I decided to, um, to, to basically just continue from there on out. And more and more people approached me. And I, I think at the time it was just because, um, you know... 
there were there's lots of like designers out there but at the time it was just very hard to probably find someone that was specialized in yeah. that field because it, it takes very specific templates and and even just design theories for that kind of world and i don't imagine there were a ton of other designers doing that at the time yeah at the time they're, they're in that community specifically because i like i said i do believe there were plenty of people out there that were doing it at the time as well and creating probably much much better results than i did um and uh i i just think i i was just very lucky with that hey there you just watch a clip from my creative podcast if you'd like to check out the full episode as well as other episodes as soon as they come out you can support me over on patreon for the three dollar tier or you can just subscribe here and wait for clips and podcast episodes to come out eventually